Visitors to the Porzione Colo Nuova marvel at the faithfully reproduced frescoes, stonework, and wood carvings. And rightfully so, they are truly masterful. But among the most difficult projects in the recreation of the chapel was one that often goes overlooked, the exquisitely detailed ironworks. Artisans down through the ages certainly had more experience with these materials than we do today, but Angela found the right person for the job, Eric Clausen. Eric's an artist, uh, and he's a small family business with his dad in Berkeley, and I knew that he could do this. She called and said that uh, she had a job that she was told couldn't be done, and it was making the ironwork, get a seat for, for this uh, porcelain cola. And uh, I had no idea what she was talking about. So uh, I came by and checked it out, saw the photographs, and said, oh yeah, yeah, this is uh, right up my alley. I can do this. I've always loved to work the old style blacksmithing. For many years, I burned coal uh, in my forge instead of using gas. And I used to weld in the forge with hammers. And uh, I love the traditional methods. That gate on the altar is uh, phenomenal, the one that he created for us. It's a very difficult gate to produce in 2008. You know, I mean, it's really medieval. To make an exact match in every detail, Eric needed more than just measurements. Even photographs didn't provide enough three-dimensional information. So project manager Alfonso Rochola came up with an ingenious solution, Play-Doh. When I was in, in Italy, I got some Play-Doh and I with the plate, I made the print of the design. When we came back, then I showed to Eric, he looked at us and said, no problem. I took these, uh, these dimensions and I worked off of those. I made these medallions by turning a die on the lathe and making a die that would stamp them in a big press and then another die to cut them out. When I was bending the curves, the wavy bars on the railing, I thought maybe I could make a shortcut and I made some dies, some stamping dies with the, uh, the curve, and I put the material in there and went to press it in a hydraulic press. Uh, the metal snapped. It couldn't take the pressure because it had to stretch so much. They're so wavy. They're, they're uh, just too wavy for that. So I thought, okay, I'll heat them up and I'll do them hot. And when I did them hot, they stretched so much that it still snapped. So I had to hand bend each one. Uh, I hand bent every bend on there. The windows in the back gate are a very traditional method of piercing. So the intersections run through one another. The piercing is done hot with a chisel. You split the material with a chisel, you run it through, and then you take a round drift and spread it apart so the material swells and opens and creates a hole and the bars run through one another. This creates this nice grid that the back gate is formed of. The medieval bars on the windows are very simple. They're just one or two verticals with bars running through them. To put the bars in the stone, we figured out a way where we could insert the bars first and then they would put the stone around them rather than trying to insert the, the material into the stone. It, it was almost impossible. So uh, this worked out the best. We put the bars in and they worked the stone around the bars. That ensures that they're in there good and solid. Those two medieval windows on the west elevation that are incredible. I always feel that the ironwork is, is like the seasoning. If you cook a steak, when you put on some, some seasoning uh, or sauce or whatever, that's what the ironwork is. It's, it's what makes it, in my opinion. You can't do it without the ironwork.